Um, welcome everybody, nice to see um, all of you. Um, a few less than this morning's session, but I'm guessing um, this one might have an impact on the school run or whatever. So there's uh, some people are morning, some people are afternoon. Lovely to see those of you who joined us today. Um, I'm going to take you on a run through the digital materials that are available to you. Um, Living Learning English have made this wonderful decision to go paperless, which um, we absolutely need more of in this world, don't we? So much of our teaching material is now available online um, and so available in a digital form that moving to a paperless classroom is absolutely the way forward. It's what we need. Um, what I'm going to show you is what you have available to you as Living Learning English teachers and to show you the um, materials that you can use in your classroom. Um, Monica, when the students um, sign up for courses with you, will be allocating a book and the student will be receiving a digital book um, which matches your materials. So as we go through, I'll, we'll do a couple of steps really. First of all, I'll talk you through what there is and what's available. The second step then is we'll look at how the one of the two platform works in a bit more detail. Um, and as we look at that, we'll be looking at how you might consider using it with your students. So that's the moment that we'll look at how your classrooms will work. And then finally, we'll have a very quick look at the older platform so that you know what you have. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Let's do that. Let's choose the right screen. There we go. Um, OK. Oh, we have a question for Bob. Oh, do you have a question for us? Um, you need to pop your mic on if you want to ask a question. Oh. Oh, OK. Of hands down, that's okay. All right, so um, here we go. Then. So, look at what you can see here is Macmillan Education Everywhere.com. Macmillan Education Everywhere.com is where you have your library for your materials. I'm going to log in and I'm going to log in as Living Learning English. So, Monica will provide you with your login details there. You'll have seen on the page before and on this page, we have this yellow stripe across the top. And the yellow stripe across the top um, is in English um, and today it's in Spanish and Polish, but it's in many languages. Um, and this is our status update for the system. So often, well not often, but occasionally if something's not working for you, um, the first thing to do is check this yellow line and it will tell you that our platform is working as usual or that there's an issue with our platform. And um, the reason we put that there is so that you know whether it's something at our end or your end that's not working. And um, it's very rare that we have um, outages with our platform. But anything that doesn't go right, first of all, have a look up there and make sure that everything is working. All right. OK. so. That's the first thing, I'm going to wipe that off. So you'll see here, look, it says welcome Monica because this is Living Learning English here. And here you have all of the books that are available to you as Living Learning English teachers. For each of these titles, you have access to each of the levels as well. So there's an awful lot of content here for you. It's a really amazing resource. Um, it's like having a teacher's room library in your own home. I mean, it's just a fab resource. Um, I'm going to tell you what there is in here and what each of the titles are. Some of them you'll know already, others you won't. And I'm going to start with this little group of three here. Academy Stars, Give Me Five and Global Stage. These three are juniors titles. And I think these are the three that possibly you'll use the least. These are for primary and pre-primary students and, and junior students, um, young learners, very young learners. And they have different objectives, really. Academy Stars is a little bit academic, a little bit general English. Give Me Five is on the general English end and Global Stage is on the academic end. All three lovely courses. 
And um, Global Stage has a really good literacy content to it. And Global Stage has a very much a 21st century skills focus and looking at the junior student as a member of our global community. It's a really nice course. The other course is Academic Stars are very much project-based learning and Give Me Five communication-based learning. So all three lovely courses. If you're going to teach juniors, definitely worth having a look at those courses if juniors are in your wheelhouse of what you teach. All right. So those are the junior courses. Academy, Academy Stars, Give Me Five, Global Stage. Then across the top, we have three courses here. Gateway, second edition, Gateway to the World, and Get Involved. And further down, we have Optimize. So Gateway to the World, uh, Gateway, Gateway to the World, Get Involved, Optimize. These are four teams courses, courses for teenagers, 12 upwards. Many of you will know Gateway from its print incarnation. Gateway second edition, I've popped this into your library simply because many of you will know it and many of you will love it. And so it's there because it's familiar to you. However, Gateway to the World is the latest edition. Gateway to the World is the one I would recommend of the two of them. Um, but when we introduce Gateway to the World, lots of people have activities and tasks that they really love in Gateway. So we've made Gateway available to you too. In terms of those three courses, Gateway to the World, Get Involved and Optimize, it's very similar to the juniors courses. Um, Gateway to the World is the middle course. Gateway to the World has a, is a general English course that has some exam prep in it. So it's a really nice course if you're mostly wanting to improve students' language skills, but you also want them to leave with some exam skill that they can, that's not just for English lessons, that's also transferable to their other subjects at school. So if Gateway to the World is in the middle, Get Involved is at the general English end of the scale. Get Involved is a really nice, um, very communicative um, general English course really lovely um i it's brand new for us we only have four levels available at the moment and you have them all as the levels become available in the um, after christmas in the new year and another level in the spring those will be added to your book list gorgeous gorgeous general english course i really love it um optimize and um, those of you who are in christina's session would have seen optimize and from christina's session you'll guess that optimize is the other extreme and that's the real exam prep for teenagers there so um from general english to academic so from get involved to optimize with gateway to the world sitting in between the two of them all right so three really lovely courses for your teens um i'll talk about your older teens in a moment but i'm just going to tell you a couple of other bits that you have here Optimize, um, we've talked about, ready for. So ready for, um, you have two sections, ready for IELTS, and this is the ready for other courses. So at the moment we have B2 first in there, and shortly after Christmas we'll be adding a C1 advanced course into there for you. So ready for is your exam courses for adults and older teams ready for b1 first ready for ielts both of them really lovely exam courses um ready for ielts is an absolute classic if you know sam mccarter sam is the ielts god and he is the ielts guru and he's the best ielts material writer going um he wrote ready for ielts it's a fab, fab, fab course totally recommend it okay so for exam prep, we have ready for IELTS, ready for series. This one here in the middle, In Company, I'm sure many of you know it. This is the third edition of In Company. In Company is a business English course book. Um, and as I told the group this morning, you know, I, um, I started my career in ELT as a business English teacher. And 
um, just hated those course books. But that you know, unit one is marketing, unit two is human resources, unit three is the finance department, unit four is the production department. And if you work in human resources, once you've done unit two, nothing else is interesting to you. In company is not that kind of business book. In company focuses on the whole company and it looks at business functions and business projects as opposed to individual business departments. So um, it will look at things like meeting skills, presentation skills, um, negotiation skills, teamwork. Um, and it has lots of case studies in there to work on the case studies with your students, lots of project based learning in there, and then a whole chunk of functional language. So that business functional language. And that's what they need, isn't it, business students? Because often they know the vocabulary for their part of the world, for their, for their jobs. Most people know their vocab. What they struggle with is the functional language to pull it all together into coherent communication. In company is brill at this. You have six levels of in company all waiting for you. All right. Um, so that leaves us with a couple of other books that are left over Language Hub and Open Mind. Open Mind is your alternative general English book. So it's really in there just as a general English resource book. You may find that you want to use it with some students. It's an older course. It's general English. It's really lovely. Use it as a resource book by all means. But for your general English students, you're going to be using Language Hub most of the time. And Language Hub is just fab. If you've ever been to any of my sessions, any of my webinars, any of that, you'll know that I just go on and on and on and on and on about how fab Language Hub is. But that's because it's great. It's a really good course. Um, if you have older teens, um, 16 plus, um, 15 year olds with a good head on their shoulders. If you've got those older teens, they'll love Language Hub. It's a good um, young adult, older teenager course, but it also works for you know adults of my advanced years as well. Um, really lovely course. Topic syllabus that talks about stuff that people want to talk about these days. We're not singing Shania Twain and talking about why Russians don't smile. We're talking about, um, you know, technology, the environment. We're talking about not just travel, but experiences as well. Like real nice topics in there, real, really appealing to that Gen Z uh, millennial kind of mindset. Really lovely topics. Um, so Language Hub is your go to there. Of course, that I forgot. Look, is this one at the bottom, which is skillful. Skillful is EAP, English for academic purposes, and skillful is there for any students that you have who are prepping for A levels, prepping for um, university entrance exams, or who are in their first years of university or in any time in university. It's great for students on pre master's courses as well. But anybody who's looking for an academic English, Skillful is your series. It's in two different sections for each level, reading and listen, reading and writing, speaking and listening. It covers lovely things like, um, oh, what's, what's the word I'm after? Um, my brain has gone dead. But it does have lots of nice things in there like study skills and um, lots of really great brainstorming activities in there as well for students. And you know when we have those students who say, I don't know what I think about this. Skillful really helps them with that. I mean, really great critical thinking. That's the word I was looking for. If you're teaching your students from another course book, it's always worth dipping into skillful for those critical thinking lessons they're really lovely um, because you have all of this resource even though your student might be working from a different book you can always dip in and pull something out can't you critical thinking and study skills in skillful just beautiful lessons all right anyway the last thing that you have here is um, this little tab here that says macmillan books for teachers 
this um i've slipped into here a cheeky little uh, methodology book for you a little resource book and this book is 700 activities for the classroom um it's a really brilliant book 700 activities 700 classroom activities um it's a classic of the elt world and it does what it says on the can you have 700 activities all organized by theme and by level and you will always find something in there that goes with your class because it's a small book and there are 700 of them each of them is about a paragraph long just telling you what to do how to set it up what you'll need and what the outcome should be really really great resource use it use it use it please use it okay so i'm gonna have a little bit of water because my my voice is going a little and then we're going to move away from this all right so this is your bookshelf what i want to do is show you um the main platform that you'll be using so i'm going to um oh in fact before i do that i'm going to show you your resource centers every book that you have here every title that you have you have every level for it and for every level you have a teacher's resource center a separate teacher's resource center so let's have a quick look at language hub i'm going to click onto it here and open that up you'll see here we have tabs across the top the first tab is apps we won't worry about that at the moment but the other tabs are for the different levels i'm going to go to intermediate so i click on that and you'll see i have two options for intermediate test generator well that is what it is isn't it i mean that's a really lovely tool that allows you to either use a pre-existing text uh, test or create your own test for your students definitely worth logging in having a play around with that really great all right but teachers resource center remember every book at every level has a teacher's resource center in there you'll find lots of things that are useful. You'll find all of your audio and video from the book. With Language Hub, you have extra video lessons as well. You'll find your worksheets for the video lessons. You'll find all of your answer keys and your audio scripts, video scripts in there. Teacher's book worksheets. This is a little PDF that is, you know, at the back of the teacher's book, you have the black and white photocopyables. This is that, but in a PDF version. So here you have all of those um, worksheets that we love so much from the course book. Those are in there in Teacher's Book Worksheets. We have word lists. Um, our word lists are either in English or word lists for French, German, and Italian as well with a translation. I like the just English ones. I don't know how many of you use word lists, but I love them um this is the word list for unit one and um, let's just um pull that um, oh make it a bit bigger for you so you can see it um so this is unit one just unit one of intermediate language hub and you can see we have lots of new vocab here and um, we look at meaning form and form and pron of each word so the word the part of speech the form the pron so we have phonetics for UK and USA, the meaning, the definition, and the sample sentence. And you'll see there are lots for each lesson, for each unit, sorry. I use word lists um, because, you know, when I, was, when I was at school, I used to have a little strepsils tin that my teacher would give us cut out words in, and those would be the words we'd have to learn and use. And this just reminds me of that, and I love it. And I've used word lists with students to, you know, get them to write using those word lists, get them to speak using those word lists, get them to um, write just one more sentence that's personal to them using those words. Lots of things you can do with word lists. All right, the CFR mapping, this is probably more for Monica when it comes down to prepping the lessons. But if you want to, I know in my session, I talked about the, the Common European Framework, and how, when you're creating your own tasks, refer them back to that. Here, this is the Common European Framework for your course, and it shows you how what you're doing that day 
refers to the common European framework and vice versa. Really useful stuff, interesting if you like that kind of thing. Um, the final thing, now look, in each course, in each level and in each teacher's resource center, the thing at the bottom of the page is probably the most important and it's the teacher's book. This is where you will find your teacher's book for every single course that you teach. And it's here, it's a PDF. It's a big PDF, look, it's 29 megs. So don't go downloading it two minutes before you start to teach, but download a copy of it, get it ready for when you're working on that course. Um, teacher's book, as you would expect, the language of one is particularly fabulous, but um, lesson plans, lesson extension activities, um, answers, methodology guide for teachers for the course. Your teacher's book is there. Please use them. Um, I know that experienced teachers, we, did, we kind of think we can do without the teacher's book. And I'm as guilty of that as anybody else. But actually, have a look at your teacher's book, particularly before you start teaching that course. Just fab, 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 fab. All right. So. Remember, to find that, we pick a course, so Gateway to the World, we go to the level, and there we have a teacher's resource center, all right? So, and at the bottom, we have, or where my teacher's book is not at the bottom here, my teacher's book is somewhere else, where are the resources for teachers? Teacher's ebook, there it is. So it's always in there, your teacher's book is always in there. Loads of stuff in there. So, bookshelf, choose your book, choose your level, teacher's resource center. It's always there for you, all right? When you're getting ready to start teaching a course, just dip into the teacher's resource center and see what's available to you for that course, okay? So, that's your teacher's resource center. It's really useful. Language hub then. Um, we're recording this, so don't worry if your mind is a little bit exploding with information. I understand that. I get it. Um, I just want to make sure you've got everything so you can refer back to it. I'll also be providing Micah with a little pack that gives you um, lots of how-to videos, lots of video tutorials, lots of FAQs, and lots of how-to guides that you can share with your students as well. So for all of this, there's a load of backup that you have access to. In the chat box, I'm also going to pop in there a help desk. It's help at macmillaneducation.com. There you go, help at macmillaneducation.com. Our help desk are pretty much 24 hours. They're all around the world and they're lovely and they're really useful and they're really helpful and they will, have the answers to your questions. I would promise you that no question is too daft for them. So don't feel that you don't want to ask somebody because you feel a bit daft. Really don't. They've heard it all. They've seen it all. They're happy to help. Contact help um, direct. You don't have to contact Monica and ask Monica to ask them to help. Um, but what you can do is copy Monica in on any questions that you have for help. And that way a central knowledge base is being developed as well um, and monica will see the answers from the help team but by all means contact them directly generally they get back to you really quickly i mean they're great they're fun all right so lots of stuff available to you let's have a look at how it will work in the classroom okay so i'm going to use language hub as my example so i'm going to click on language hub and now that I'm getting ready to teach, the first thing I'm going to go for is my teacher app. In most of our courses, this is called the teacher app. Some courses you'll see it's called by its old name, which is the presentation kit. All right, so when you're getting ready to teach, you open up your laptop, your students just sorting themselves out, they're getting their coffee and they're coming to the table. You open up your computer, your screen, your laptop, whatever you're doing, and you go to your teacher app or your presentation kit, all right? So we click on open that. Now, this is my top tip for you. Always use the browser view, unless you've got really terrible internet. Um, if you've got 
poor internet, this will still work. But if you've got really terrible internet, you can download the app using the download button. What I would say to you, though, is using the browser means that you always get an up-to-date version. There's nothing worse than using your downloaded one and you go to use it for class and it says a new version is available, please download it. And you lose 10 minutes downloading a new version. Viewing in browser um, keeps all of your data there, but it just means that you're using it on the live on the brand new system, that's all. So let's go back then to how we find this. I'm teaching Language Hub. I'm teaching um, using my teacher app and I'm going to use it in the browser. So I click View Browser. OK. And there we go. That will open up. Or I, because I have it open in another window, I'm just going to go to my other window. There you go. So here's my teacher app. And this is how it opens up. Now, your students have a student app, which they will be using with you in the classroom as well. So you'll have your computer open. They'll either be working on a laptop, a tablet, or just on their mobile phone. And their student app looks very similar to this. It's not a twin, but it's definitely a direct relatives, okay? So they look alike. The interfaces do seem similar. So, or they're very, very, very similar. So what you'll see is pretty much what your student sees. Um, obviously your student doesn't have all of these books. Um, I'm going to show you content from the language hub intermediate and i'm going to show you eventually we'll get there how i would use expect you to use that in the classroom all right so my example is here language hub intermediate for language hub intermediate as a teacher i have access to three books my student also has access to three books the workbook is what you would expect a black and white workbook that accompanies the um, the student book and it follows the topic and language syllabus, and it has extra control practice. So here, extra grammar practice, um, extra vocab practice. There's also extra pran and all kinds of other stuff in there, all right? Um, we don't tend to use the book so much, the workbook, for our students. Well, our students don't tend to use it so much because they have prep and practice, which we'll look at in a minute. So I think you'll probably end up using the workbook as just extra control practice when you need it in the classroom, all right? Prep and practice, this is what the students have on their phone, and this is what they'll be using mostly um, to practice on their own. So for unit one, lesson 1.1. So lesson 1.1, for example, is a four page spread in the book. And for those four pages, we have three prep activities and we have nine practice activities. These are student managed self-correcting activities that the students do on their own. You can set it them as homework if you're doing homework and students can go off and sit on the sofa and do it. Split into two sections, practice. This is the post lesson practice. So we've taught all of this. Now they can practice it for themselves. Prep, this is a bit different. This is pre lesson. So, if we've just finished lesson 1.1, for example, I would ask my students to do lesson 1.2 prep before we get started with that. And all the prep is really is looking at the grammar, the vocab, and the pran that's coming up. So, we're looking at the target language for the next lesson. Students then go into the lesson knowing what's coming up. And you go into the lesson having seen how well your students have done with it, because you can see that on their progress tracker. Um, I'm going to send you links to look at how progress trackers work and all of that stuff. All right. So prep is really useful. Prep and practice, it's on the student's phone. They can go and sit on the sofa and do it. They can do their prep and practice um, while they're waiting for their friends to turn up in Costa because they want to get out of the house for a while. They can do it while you're, uh, they can sit at the kitchen table and do it while you're making dinner and they can ask you about it as they go through. But it's really just for self practice. Okay. The main star of the show, obviously, is the student's book. And this is the core of your lessons. 
and I'm going to open that up. Whichever book you're using and whichever platform you're using, the student books are always available in the order that you would imagine a print book to be. So we start with a table of contents, a welcome for the students, then we have all of the units, and then at the end of the book, the bits that you would expect at the back of a book, an irregular verb table, your grammar section, your vocab section, communicative activities, the writing activities. If you were at my session this morning, these is, this is where you'll find your lovely writing activities, audio scripts, and a bit of publisher blurb. All right, so that's how they are. We go to look at unit one. Um, the opener is always the same look. Um, the opener of any unit of our books is always about activating schemata, getting students thinking about the topic du jour. What are we talking about today? What do I know about it? What do I think about it? So it's all prepping them for the next lesson. This is a lesson about communication. So let's have a look. On this page of Language Hub, we have three things. We have objectives, discussion questions, and an image. I'm just going to show you how the Zoom function works. When I click on objectives, it becomes really big. It becomes as big as it can get. And when I click on it again, it shrinks. The same with the discussion questions. Click on, and I can click off. All right. Now, when it comes to the picture, because the picture's big, if I use that click on Zoom, it doesn't get any bigger. All right. So you'll find that you need to use the alternative Zoom with some parts of the book. Some parts zoom nice and big automatically. Other parts, if you look here in the top right hand corner of the page, we have this 100% here. You see that? 100%. Here I have the zoom. So I can zoom in using that up to 300%. And then I have scroll bars to move around, or I can just move it around using my grab mouse there. Okay. So two different ways to zoom in with this tech. Next to my 300%, look, I have this square. You see this square? When I click on that, bang, back to normal size. So zoom in and bang, or zoom in, zoom out. Really straightforward. That's how you move around the pages, all right? And for your students, it's exactly the same. Okay. So. Let's have a look at the body of the course then. So this is unit 1.1. It's unit one, sorry, lesson 1.1. When we click on the objectives, you can see we have our communicative objectives, and then we have the language that we're going to look at is named there. So um, when we're talking about, for example, um, our confidence can do questions, um, can do here would be I can update my status on social media. That's where we start. And then you would break that down. All right. So look, I can zoom in on the photos and we can talk about these individual photos. Um, you know, um, who are these people? Are they a family? Are they really at the beach? Is it just a Zoom meeting background? Are they in a really hot country or I don't know, is it Skegness with a nice tropical filter on it? What is, what's going on here? All right, so we can zoom in and talk about them. We can zoom in on the different questions and work on those, and we can zoom in and zoom out, or we can also use our big zoom at the top of the page, all right? Nice and straightforward. So if I'm teaching this with my one-to-one -one students or my two-to-one students, what I'm doing is I've got this on my screen and I've got it open so that they can see the book. They've either then got their laptop or tablet. Laptop or tablet will allow them to see the book in this format too. Or they might just have their mobile phone with them. Their mobile phone, they won't see the book as it's laid out like this because it will be too small for them on a phone screen. What they have on their book is interactive versions of each of the questions what they have on their phone sorry interactive versions of each question and you have those two okay so i'm going to look at this um 
Well, let's start with this. This is reading part B. It's a prediction question. So match the pictures with the social media status updates. So I'm going to reading part B. I'm going to go to this button. Look, you see this button at the top right hand side of my screen, just there or just there. I'm not sure which way I should be pointing. Um, you'll see there it says interactive activities and I can click on that. And all of the interactive versions of the questions on those pages are available there. Every question in the book, apart from speaking questions, have an interactive version. And every one of these interactive versions is available on your student's laptop, tablet, or mobile phone. So if they're just using the phone, they have these. So I want to do reading B. So I'm going to pick up reading B there. I can make it full screen if I want. And then I can do this either with my student, give them my mouse and get them to do the click and check and match. Or I can do it to check the answers with them, or they can just do it on their phone and then we can share the answers together. All right. I have a way to check my answers so I can see what's right and what's wrong. And I can do the answers one by one or I can do the answers all together at once. Okay, so lots of ways to use this. Um, for the reading activity, look, reading is called My Perfect Life Online. So I can click on that. And here I have um, a text only version of that reading, which is really useful for your students if they struggle with reading because there's too much interference on the page of images typesetting and everything. If that drives them a bit crazy, this is a nice way to do it. If you have dyslexic students who need a filter, um, so if you're if they're using a blue filter, for example, you can put this page up and they can put their blue filter on the screen and that will help them to um, to read it there as well. Okay, so that's available for you also. Um, what else did I want to tell you about this? Oh, look, on your students' mobile phones, they also have that reading text. So if you want to do the reading, maybe you do the prediction together, but then if you want to get them to do the reading for comprehension, and it's a fairly lengthy text, they can take their mobile phone and go and sit on the sofa and read it and answer the questions, and then come back to you when they've read it and answered the questions. It means that they're doing their reading in a very relaxed way, in a very natural way, because they all read stuff on their phones these days, and or we all read phones, stuff on our phones these days or on their tablets. It doesn't mean that they have to sit next to you and read, which some students can find intimidating. So that one-to-one -one setting, you're really free to do these kind of things. So they have all of that on their phone. Okay, and I'm gonna come back to this page in a minute, but I'm just gonna go to the next page. And here we have listening. We have a listening task. So um, on that listening interactive activities, I have every time I have a listening task, it, I click on it and it comes up with the listening audio is there. That's where you'll find the listening audio. You also have the audio script there. And if you click on a part of the audio script, it will it will automatically play that part of the listening. So if, for example, Sebastian here says, excuse me, are you looking for Olivia? And you want to look at tone and intonation there, you can click on that and it will play that part automatically for you. So a really nice way to move around in the listening text. So that's where your listening is. I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna zoom in and show you um, how we connect from page to page. So here, look, in the grammar section, it says, go to the grammar hub on page 122. Okay, so that's a lot of clicking to click to page 122, right? So we don't do that. We have next to your interactive activities button at the top right, you have quick links. And wherever in the book it says go to, if you click on your quick links, you'll have a link there that will take you to it. So I click on Grammar Hub page 122. It opens that up automatically, but look what's happened. I was zoomed in on my Grammar Hub, on my page, 
and when now it's open this it's still zoomed in so you have to remember knock your zoom off before you move to a different page right um but you'll get used to that i mean you'll only have to do it once for you to remember that oh yeah that's something i have to do the grammar hub section is presented exactly how you want in the unit we have um, some noticing activities where we notice the grammar in the context of the reading or the listening. Then we have some inductive approach activities to looking at, you know, work out the rules for yourself. Then we have a little bit of control practice and then we come here. And here we have on one side of the page, the rule and some examples. And the other side of the page, we have control practice of both meaning and form for the grammar point. And obviously you have interactive versions of those questions and your student has those interactive versions on their phone. Okay, so really simple to work. I go back to my quick links and that will take me back to the unit, all right? So, you're teaching from this, your student has either this page on their phone, on their laptop or tablet, or they just have the interactive version on their phone. You'll find how it works for your context, right? Um, you can't break this, you can't break it, but you can have a good play around with it and work out what works for you. Some of you, I know, will be happy just using this page and zooming in and zooming out and that will be enough for you and you won't want to go any further than that others of you will use all of the whistles and bells and it will work for you that way um we're teachers we're we're helping people to learn and i think for ourselves we love learning too and you know going outside our comfort zones with tech well that's been our life for the last two years hasn't it um and you know Try new stuff with this. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. Um, across the side here, you have some tools. You have highlighters, you have some text annotators. You have different tools here that you can use. Have a practice, have a play. You can't break it. See how you go on with it, all right? So with Language Hub, just really remember, it's all about communication. And one thing that I do want to show you is here, look, this is called Speaking Hub. You know, if for those of you who've done CELTA, when you did CELTA, your CELTA tutor always used to say, get to the communicative activity, get to the communicative activity. Whatever you do, make sure you do the communicative activity. This is the communicative activity. Speaking Hub comes at the end of every lesson, and it is a speaking activity that is designed to pull in all of the language input that they've had in that unit in that lesson so make sure you do those with your students you'll find because you're special one-to-one -one teachers you're going to have to adapt a little bit some of those activities to make them work for your context but your experts are doing that by now so that's okay i'm not worried about that and um, so this format and this moving around works for Language Hub, for Ready for First, it works for Gateway to the World, it works for Get Involved. So the key titles that you're going to be working on, whether you're teaching teens or adults, are all on this platform. Okay, so nice and easy, nice and straightforward. We do have some books that are on an older platform. So I'm just going to show you those. So let's go back to our bookshelf. And bring up my bookshelf here. Come on, I'm going to close a couple of tabs, make sure that works. Okay, so let's have a look at Skillful. Remember, Skillful was the academic course. Skillful shares a platform with Optimize, In Company, Ready for, Open Mind, The Old Gateway, Academy Stars. All of these older courses use this book, this platform. So when I click on this here, your good old faithful resource center is there, but look, it says presentation kit rather than app. So I'm going to choose the right level. Um, I'm going to choose level three, reading and writing. And I'm going to go to my teacher presentation kit. Looks familiar, right? It gives us this option again. 
Remember, which one do we go for? We go for browser. So I click view. And then this, rather annoyingly, I guess, it brings us up a whole new bookshelf. This, this then just takes us to the old system. And on this bookshelf, you have all of the books that are available to you, again, on this system. So Gateway, Academy Stars, Gateway, Gateway, lots of Gateway, Skillful, in company, Skillful, Skillful, Open Mind, Optimize, and Ready for IELTS. So loads of books available to you. I'm going to go for level three skillful. So you can see it's here, skillful three. And this one that says teachers presentation kit, that's the one I'm opening. So you come on here, you choose your book, you open it up and automatically we see it's a little bit more basic than the other section, but it's lovely nonetheless. We have laid out as you would expect your book, scope and sequence contents, your units, and then your extra bits at the bottom. So I'm going to go to unit two, which is design. And unit two opens on pages 26 to 43. So when I click on the unit, it brings up those pages and I click on the pages. And there I have it. Um, oh, this takes me to where I was last time. OK, so here is my opening page for Skillful for that unit, unit two. And this will work with Gateway and all the others that I just mentioned. Slightly older fashioned, but really nice nonetheless. Um, you have your answers available to you in there. Um, you have interactive activities for your students. Your students have interactive questions in here. You have everything that you want. The, the trick that I would say with this is look at the top bar here. You see you have this spanner icon. You see it looks like a spanner. Look at the focus on the bottom of the screen and see what happens when I click on the spanner. There you go. It pulls you up that little navigation bar. I, Whenever I teach on this, the first thing I do is I open up my page and I open up my navigation bar because this allows me to move easily between pages and it gives me my zoom in a way that's really easy to access as well. All right. So all of that is there for you. Um, where, oh, look, here, this is one of those fab critical thinking lessons where, and here we're talking to students about flawed arguments. So assessing the reasoning of what the writer is presenting. I love these, really cool. All right, so that's skillful, and that's how that platform works, slightly differently to the other platform, but also all available to you on your bookshelf. Okay, so loads of stuff available to you it was a quick whip through i'm going to stop sharing and i'm going to ask you if you have any questions any questions anyone no fab fantastic well i like that don't you have any questions look um your mind is going to be blown by all of this stuff i know it's a load of stuff to take in so when you're ready to get started when you know you've got a student coming just spend a bit of time familiarizing yourself with what's available for your book remember look at your teacher's resource center and remember have a play around with either the teacher app or the presentation kit and just work what's going to work for you in that class you'll get used to it as you go along um remember to look at the document that i'm sending to monica that monica will send to you because on there you'll have um you know if you're going to teach from language hub what you, for example you'll be able to look at the language hub section and the link in there will take you to the help page for language hub which has lots of video tutorials and it has lots of faqs so some of those are also aimed at your students so you'll be able to help your students out there as well and then just remember you're not on your own with it um, you have the help desk help at macmillaneducation.com and if you need something that you um, need a quick answer on talk to monica monica will get in touch with me maddie or one of our colleagues at macmillan and we will get you a quick answer on that all right so really don't stress about it it's very straightforward i promise 
Um, any questions, anybody, before we let you go? No? Okay. Well, look, fab to see you all today. Really great. Um, I'm going to stop the recording now. Let's do that.